pick up mice and big crickets for my bigger adult tarantulas. And I will update you guys when we get there and kind of do a tour. It's probably one of my favorite pet shops. <laughs> Tarantulas. They used to have a king baboon. Cork bark tubes. Forest scorpion. Little Tokai okay, Gecko. Other oh, fish. Oh, I got what I needed. I got, um, Two fuzzy mice, two poppers, and a kinky. I see it. And they're all frozen. I did feed live at first, but I transferred them over to uh, Frozen Thawed. And then I got a dozen large crickets for my big tarantula. So when we get home, I will be feeding them and doing an update video on that and kind of going over a couple of things. Okay, so we're back from the pet store. I threw a couple crickets in. Um, this is Calypso's enclosure. She is my Chromatopelma cyanopubescens, um, or is known as the green bottled blue. I have had her a little over a year now. She is one of the first tarantulas I got. Her and Nagini were basically in the same box, and I got them at the same time. So I don't know which one you'd consider patient zero, but... I would lean towards her. Um, so I just threw an adult cricket in there and kind of seeing if maybe I can get her to come out. So a little background on Calypso. She's, again, a GBB, green bottle blue. They are a terrestrial tarantula found in the desert arid regions of Venezuela where they make their burrows underneath shrubs and, like, plant life out there. So they come from more of a drier climate, even though as soon as you want to keep more on the moist side, so what I would do with her as a baby, I would keep her semi-moist. I would basically water down one half of her deli cup and leave the other half dry and provide a water bowl. And that's just because slings or spiderlings <coughs> can dry out pretty quickly. Okay, so diving into what I was going to talk about, we'll just kind of focus on her burrow there and hopefully she makes an appearance. Maybe. I don't know if she's got the cricket. Another. I threw two in here. Let's see if I can kind of entice her to come out. And if not, that's fine. Give her a couple minutes. Um, so when getting your first tarantula, there are a couple of phrases 
little words that you're going to need to know. Um, the words are fossorial, arboreal, and terrestrial. And basically, those are the different, if you will, types of tarantulas. Arboreal being that they live up in the trees. Um, depending where you find human habitation, they can, you know, make their way into your house. And But you'll find them normally on the ceilings or in high corners. And there's her legs, so she knows it's there. Um, then you have terrestrial which is what she is, which means she's found normally on the ground. And terrestrial spiders are what I would consider the iconic image of what you think when you get a tarantula. So, like, you know, those those ones you see in pet shops, like the rose hairs, the G. porteri, or the G. rosea, depending, um, are the ones that you commonly would find. Let's see if I can get this cricket to come back. Go that way. I don't know she's gonna I gave her a super worm last week but usually she's a pretty good eater there we go let's see if she'll put on a show for us um and then you have fossorial and fossorial means that they live usually under the ground. Usually with fossorial, that pertains more to old world. And as a beginner, I don't personally recommend old world as your first. So we'll focus on arboreal and terrestrial. Um, so that being said, old world and new world are also two different terms that you're going to have to be familiar with. New world tarantulas normally live, or well not live, but found, or found, ugh, tongue tied there. Um, in Central America, North America, South America, the Caribbean islands, um, basically on the western side of the hemisphere is where you're going to find your New World. New World tarantulas do not have medically significant venom. Um, they have, possess urticating hairs that they prefer to use as a first line defense, followed by then biting. Um, urticating hairs are usually hairs found on their abdomen or their butt that they will either kick off or rub off on you. And the experience can be kind of unpleasant. A lot of people report it feeling like fiberglass being flicked at you or rubbed on you. And a lot of people get allergic reactions from it, but nothing severe. They just get a little itchy and a little bit of swelling. Um, so then you have new world, or old world, excuse me. Old world tarantulas are found in the eastern side of the hemisphere, so Africa, Asia, India, um, I think there's some in Australia, basically on the eastern side of the hemisphere. In old world tarantulas, most of them are fossorial, a good chunk of them are anyway, which means they live under the ground, but they possess medically significant venom. So if you get tagged by one, the experience isn't going to be pleasant, and they do not possess urticating hairs, so that means they're more prone to bite. Usually, old worlds are more defensive. They're not as relaxed. Like, with an old world, I couldn't just sit here like I have with her and be completely 100% comfortable with me sticking my tongs in here and messing with the cricket right by her foot. Um... So, with that being said, a couple other things you need to realize when getting your tarantula is you have to figure out what kind do you want. Now, the two I recommend, obviously, are the GBB, which is what she is, and then I recommend a any really any Gramostola. They're all really, really, really relaxed, and usually... They're pretty easy to take care of. Now, that being said, grandma stolas do have a tendency to fast. Um, my G, we call them scientific names, is usually what you use in the hobby. Um, very, very rarely will you ever see anyone talk about a tarantula in common name. So be sure to whatever you get, whether it be a grandma stola or even a GBB, <coughs> to call them by their scientific name. Not only that, but it helps you kind of 
familiarize yourself <coughs> with scientific names. Excuse me. Um, but I definitely recommend either a GBB or, like I was saying, a G. Porteri or a rose hair. And the reasons why versus, in my, this is just my opinion, versus really any other starter is they're pretty easy to take care of. Now, there are pros and cons to each one of them. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion, just kind of touching base on a couple of new worlds that I own that were recommended as great beginners. And the pros and cons to each of them, really, I'll start with Calypso, of course. A pro is that she's always usually down to eat, usually, nine times out of ten. She is pretty much okay to eat. Like I said, I, I don't see the second cricket in here anymore. <laughs> I'm guessing it went down either that hole or maybe her main entrance. But they never turned out a meal. Um, a con to that is is they're they're pretty quick to think that anything that comes into excuse my dog they're pretty quick to realize that anything that comes into their enclosure is going to be food. So this is not one I would recommend handling if you are comfortable handling them. I personally don't agree with handling of any tarantula just because a they gave no benefits out of it. They really they really don't get any pleasure from being handled and be the risks outweigh the, the pros. So if you're wanting something to that's going to be a little bit more relaxed, I would definitely go with um, between the two, between a G. Porteri and a GBB, I would go with the Porteri. Now that being said, my Porteri has given me a threat pose. She didn't even bother kicking hairs, and she just went straight for the, the threat pose. Now, a threat pose is what a tarantula does when they're obviously uncomfortable with whatever you're doing. Um, it's a sign saying, hey, back off. I don't like what you're doing, and I'm going to bite. And usually tarantulas that feel this way will give you a threat pose. Um, but like I said, there's many other good starters out there. The three geniuses that they recommend is the Apollosum, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm not really good at pronouncing um, the scientific name. Um, Brachia palma is another good one. And again, Grandma Stola are the three geniuses. If you go on um, the internet, a lot of people are going to recommend to you. Did she eat that cricket? I'm guessing she did because it's gone now. <laughs> stinks because we really don't have a show. I wonder if I can get her to... Just kind of see if I can get her to poke her little legs up again. I'm guessing she's eating. Usually she sticks her legs out. So where to get your first tarantula? There are three different ways you can go about it. You can go online and Google tarantula dealers. You can go to an expo or you can go like where I went to earlier, a pet shop, and get one that way. Now, there are pros and cons to all of them. I have only really ever, I think I bought one of my spiders in my collection from a pet store. And then everything else I got from a dealer online. You can find these dealers by Googling or joining Facebook groups and kind of getting recommendations that way. My personal, personal, <laughs> personal recommendation for getting your first tarantula would be through Palp Friction, Fear Not, or um, even really Jamie's Spiders. Jamie's Tarantulas. I haven't gone through Fear Not, but I've heard great things. Um, and then you have Jamie's Tarantulas. Again, I haven't ordered from them. Um, you can do your own research on those too, but just understand that whatever way you get your spider shipping in the United States through USPS is illegal by a federal offense. So if you get caught getting a spider shipped through SPS, you can face heavy fines and possibly jail time. 
Now the last one, palp friction, I have personally dealt with. Most of the spiders in my collection have come from them. They have always pretty much communicated very well. The communication's always been really awesome. Any questions I have about it, usually they're more than happy to help me because they want to make sure that you're knowledgeable besides doing your own research. So whatever spider you get as your beginner, you want to make sure you do research, but feel free to always ask a vendor too, um, which is what I do. I usually research and then I reach out to a dealer and, hey, do you? I see that you have um, Gremisol Polkras. What's the general care like for these guys? What's their growth rate? How long does it take for them, you know, to mold? You know, basic questions like that. Um, so you can go that way. The only con of getting one via FedEx is you do have to pay shipping, which can be kind of pricey. And then you do have to wait for it. That's probably the hardest thing is waiting to get it in the mail. But unboxing is just the most sweetest experience ever. And I'll probably do an unboxing video sometime in the future. Another con of getting one through FedEx is you run the risk of having a DOA. And a DOA is a dead on arrival. But nine times out of ten, if you get one from a reputable dealer and you prove that these tarantula arrived, um, obviously not living, in the way that they expect you to. Like, usually they'll have you put, like, a pin through it. Um, sometimes they have you ship it back. Usually they will refund you or replace it. Usually. There have been a couple instances... Not for, not in my experience, but I've seen online where people have gotten a DOA and the dealer wasn't, I guess, as honest and nothing happened and they ended up losing the tarantula and money. So always find a reputable dealer. The ones I recommended are reputable. You could go out on Facebook and ask on there and usually people will tell you one of the three. That being said, the next way you can get your tarantula is you can go to expos. Now an expo is basically this huge event where you have all these different breeders of reptiles and amphibians and usually tarantulas are kind of classed in with that. And they're in this big huge, usually it's held in like a conference room or like a convention center. And you literally have a bunch of them all squished together so you can kind of work your way through each vendor and kind of find the one that you're looking for. The only problem I have found with that, though, is I feel it's more likely to be an impulse buy versus an actual dedicated buy. Now, I, I have obviously, I bought tarantulas at Expos, but it's so hard not to buy another one while you're there. <laughs> If I can zoom in, I think she may be kind of so There's her burrow right there. I'm kind of zooming on that. Hopefully she'll grace us with her presence. Oh, and there's a little bit of a molt right there. I don't know if she's going to... Ah. Oh, I'm probably going to make her mad. She's probably going to be like, food? So this is a molt. So when tarantulas get bigger, they shed their exoskeleton. And this is a previous leg from a molt. Trust me, she's got all of her legs. Um, yeah, it won't come off. So, you can go to an expo. Um, another way you can get one is go to your pet store. But going back to the expo real quick. Um, oh, forget my kid. My kids are so adventurous. You can, the pro of going to an expo is you don't have to pay shipping. That's always nice. But again, the impulse buyage is is pretty heavy. <laughs> I have bought many a teas on impulse. I do not recommend it. <laughs> <clears throat> always, 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 I can't stress it enough, always do your research when you're getting a tarantula, even if it's like your 20th. Always do research. So you can or you can go to a pet store, that's what I was saying. You can go to like your pet store, like a Petco or a Pet Smart. And get a tarantula that way. Now, I really 
the only pro I see of that is no shipping. Now, the difference between the Expo and the Pet Store is I feel like with the Expo, you're more able to ask a knowledgeable person questions versus going to a pet store and getting something that's potentially mislabeled, which I actually had happen to me. The only one I have from a pet store was mislabeled, which stinks. So you may not always know what you're getting, basically is what I'm saying. Um, my honest recommendation for getting a first tarantula is definitely going online and finding a dealer. Um, like I was saying before, I feel like the connection with the dealer is more personable. I feel like they're more willing to help you versus going to a pet store. And even at expos, sometimes they can be overwhelmed with the amount of clientele coming in and customers coming up and asking them questions and buying and, you know, whatnot versus going online and going to a dealer. And when you go online to the dealer, you can pretty much set the tone, you know, introduce yourself. Tell them what you're looking for. I just develop a really more personable relationship versus the other two. Nothing that I think is wrong with the other two. This is just my way of doing it. So getting a tarantula, you need to have reliable info. And where are you going to find that info? Now you can go on arachnid boards to find information. A lot of times arachnid boards has a lot of rapido people who have been doing it 20, 30 years, and in my eyes, I call them experts or professionals, but you tell them, they'll tell you they're always learning. You can join Facebook groups, or you can go on YouTube. Now, the problem with, I feel, going on YouTube, even speaking in my case, because I've only been keeping for a year, and going on Facebook groups is you have all these new keepers kind of meshed together and kind of trying, still trying to figure it out and giving advice. And sometimes the advice isn't always appropriate. Now, that being said, coming from me, a YouTuber, I'm just putting all this quick info out there from my perspective and how I feel. And I'm pretty sure the longer I keep my opinions and how I feel about things will grow. But that being said, you have all these new people meshed together. And so finding really good, really rich, in-depth, detail information on what you're getting can be kind of tricky. Like I said with Calypso, if you go on Facebook, a lot of people will tell you they're actually arboreal. And they're not. She is way happier in here than she was in the arboreal enclosure I originally had her in. Because when I went on Facebook, they told me, oh, she's arboreal. You know, they sometimes go on the ground, but they're, they're arboreal. They're arboreal. You know, in the wild, they climb on plants and they web up leavings and, you know, weeds and bushes. And, and yeah, that's true, but their burrows are actually underground. They're terrestrial, but they have a tendency to climb. That's kind of how I feel about it. And so the information you can find can be kind of misleading. So I honestly recommend... Um, Finding a good group on Facebook and kind of finding the right people to talk to. Like, go on there and like, hey, is there any expert keepers on here? Knowledgeable keepers who can help me, you know, find my first tarantula. I'm thinking about, you know, a curly hair, a Honduran curly hair. Um, what is the typical care for those? Like, I'm just trying to do my research right now, but I would like, you know, really good resources and really good information. Now, there are a couple YouTubers on here who are very knowledgeable who I even still watch to this day. Uh, oops, sorry, so I dropped my tongs. They fall off my leg. And there are a few on here, like I was saying, that are pretty knowledgeable, and they do know what they're talking about. And the top three I can think, well, top two I can think of hands down, is I can think of Tom Moran, he's got one on here, and The Dark Den. And both of them I still watch just for info. And I think Tom Moran actually has a, like a blog where he basically writes everything down and you know, types everything up and kind of goes into detail that way, which works out great for me because I am not only a visual learner, but I also have kind of like photographic memory. So if I read something, I retain it really well. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry she's being so boring. 
But at least she's happy. I mean, since I put her in here, she really hasn't come out that much. And really seeing her as a treat. So you want to find a really knowledgeable group and a knowledgeable people to really ask. And don't be hesitant to ask them how long have they been keeping. Um, that's one of the first few things I did is I went on, I believe it was the group Midwest Bang Gang, which is a great group. It's hilarious. I totally recommend that group. It's great. You have knowledgeable people and then you've got, it's just, it's really relaxed. And I went on that group and I remember I asked, I'm looking for my first tarantula. What are some suggestions? And then I found Calypso, um, well, basically a GBB and, then I turned around and asked, well, who here has been keeping tarantulas? You know, what are some resources I can read that you find knowledgeable? What are some good articles I can read up on them on? And they actually pointed me in the direction of Rachnaboards and several other keepers who have kept them a long time jumped on or like, I've been keeping for 10 years. I've been keeping for this many years. And I basically just bugged the crap out of them. <laughs> So basically, don't be hesitant to reach out and kind of find someone that's got experience or even go on YouTube and watch people who also have the same experience. And keep in mind, experience meaning years of keeping because the general experience is going to be different for everybody. So I've covered pretty much getting your first tarantula, three geniuses that I would recommend, a couple of terms you should be familiar with. Um, where to find your info and just some kind of precautions and different ways to do it. I think I already said that one though. Another thing you need to consider when getting, I am sorry she's so boring. <laughs> At least we know she's happy though. Um, well, it's not really happy, but content. Another thing you need to consider when getting a tarantula is, do you want a baby? Which most of the time... People do sell babies, or do you want to fork out the extra bucks and get an adult? Now, the pros and cons of that are, is I feel if you get a sling, you're going to be more comfortable as it grows. So, for example, when I first got her, I was super skittish about how fast she was, and I was afraid, you know, she was going to be super defensive and yada, yada, yada. Well, as she's grown, I've seen that she's not really defensive, but she thinks that everything in here is food. So I know not to stick my fingers in here. Like if I go to water her, I use the tongs to pull out the water bowl. When I feed her, I use the tongs to drop it in. Um, I've also learned that I can leave this lid off, which is it's pretty pretty nice. <laughs> my arboreal spiders are like, hey, the lid is off. Oh, look, there's the one cricket. I guess she ate one. Leave that guy in there for her. Um, So you kind of learn their personality. And believe it or not, tarantulas do have personalities, even though it can be kind of hard to, I guess, grasp. <laughs> but they do have personalities. So I feel like you could, you're able to not only get used to who they are as an animal, like, you know, what their personality is, but your experience with them also grows. They grow with you, so to speak. Now, on the other hand, slings are a little bit more delicate to get, to take care of, really. Not to get, but to really take care of. Just because they're little and they're more prone to dehydration. And um, they can be a little bit more trickier to take care of. I don't know if this cricket's going to just go in here and just spook her out. Or if she's just going to... Odds are, if she's got a cricket in her mouth and this cricket goes in here, she's going to come running out. Or she might kill it. Who knows? This cricket is brave. It's a brave little cricket going in there. Um. So, Or you can get an adult. And I have... I'm trying to think. I really haven't ever... Well, I guess Mimi. I got Mimi. I would call her a juvenile or a sub-adult. Um, so... You have sling, sub-adult, juvenile, slash, sub-adult, and then you have adult. Um, a sling is a spiderling, which is obviously what we were just talking about, and I consider a sling anything under two inches, and then well, about two and a half, three, I would say close, to, I'd say close to three, depending on what kind of tarantula it is, whether it's, you know, one of 
these guys a GBB? Is it a, you know, G. rosea? Or is it a post-etheria? It just, it really just depends. But I usually just base it on their size. And then obviously an adult is a full-grown tarantula. And my only experience with a, even something close to a full-grown tarantula is Mimi. Um, Mimi is about three and a half. I would say close to three inches. I wouldn't give her three and a half. I'd give her three inches. And, um, the only thing that I find to be a pro of that is they're already pretty much established. You really don't have to worry about them passing away for unknown, unknown reasons. But at the same time, like, I haven't gotten the chance to really know her. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird and some people will find, I'll probably argue with me about it, but I feel like tarantulas have personalities and they have different things and ways they like of doing things and so to speak like her she doesn't like plants in her enclosure she she just doesn't use them they stay barren and she just doesn't care while some of my other ones redecorate and with Mimi I haven't quite figured out I haven't quite figured out her and I mean thank god she's you know considered a beginner tarantula but I just I haven't really figured out who she is <laughs> Is she really defensive? Is she skittish? Is she pretty docile and relaxed? I just, I haven't figured that out yet. So I consider that kind of a drawback of getting an adult because I like to get to know all of them. And most of what I have in my collection, um, I'll actually probably show them off here in another video, is our slings. Her and then I think three or four other spiders are actually what I consider a sub-adult adult. So kind of figuring out what age group do you want and then of course what your budget is if you're going to ship you have to calculate in shipping um I think she only cost me like 35 40 ish dollars when she was like a little little girl and she was like three and a half well, like three and three three fourths of an inch I can't talk today I'm sorry I got this cold and I'm kind of like out of it but I only paid like 35-ish dollars, and then I had to pay for shipping, which was like 40, I think 45, 40. So I spent basically about 80 bucks on her, as I would say. Probably about 80 bucks. On oh, just her. Now, when you get, if you buy more than one, usually the dealer can ship them together. Like, I've gotten four spiders at one time before. It was great. Another way... You could probably get tarantulas. I was trying to think of another way you can get them. Um, is you can, if there's somebody, usually Craigslist. <laughs> I was going to say, someone that's going to rehome them. But we'll just be honest here. Craigslist. That's where I got Mimi. I went on Craigslist and like just looked it up. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and I ended up driving 45 minutes to go get her. That's the story of Mimi. <clears throat> and I'll show her in a different video. Her enclosure is probably one of the fanciest ones I have. Because the girl that I got her from, she really cared about her, like a lot. She just she didn't have time for her, which I don't I don't understand. But because tarantulas really they don't take that long to take care of. Like I've got twenty five, and it takes me maybe a half hour to feed and water everybody, and that's if I'm taking my sweet ass time. So, and one quick thing before I go, um, another thing you need to know is sometimes when you buy tarantulas in pet stores, I'm just trying to figure out how to word this, they will label something as female because they will do something called vent sexing. Now, a vent on a tarantula is basically you look under their belly and they'll have like this little slit or this little ridge and people just look at it and kind of figure out, they kind of guess if it's male or female. But the only way you can truly tell is when the tarantula molts and it's big enough, you can flip it open and you can check that way. So that's basically how I checked her. Her, I, her molt came out, I flipped her molt out, wetted it down, and then found out she was female. So that's just another thingy. Unless you buy it confirmed, like from the dealer, that it is a confirmed uh, male or female via molt. That's the only way you're really going to be sure that you're getting a boy or a girl. But yeah. So I'm going to end this video. And 
You guys have a great weekend.